Hello, in today's video I'm going to explain the reason why large sensors are less noisy than small sensors and why despite this you might actually still prefer a small sensor camera for astrophotography. Firstly, let's look at the different types of noise that affect image quality. When a sensor is flooded with light, the number of photons hitting each pixel is consistent. But if we reduce the amount of light hitting each pixel down to a trickle, such as when shooting in low light conditions, for example, then the light hitting each pixel is more randomized. For example, if we flip a coin just three times, the results will probably lean heavily towards either heads or tails, such as getting heads twice and tails once. But if we flip a coin 100 times, the variation decreases much closer to being 50-50 and even split, such as getting 51 heads and 49 tails. Read noise is the electronic noise generated by the sensor itself in the circuitry and occurs when converting the captured light into a digital signal. Read noise becomes more prominent when using higher ISO or gain settings, whilst at lower ISO settings, read noise has less effect, resulting in a cleaner, less noisy image. Dark current noise is unrelated to the light hitting the sensor. It's basically just unwanted signal generated by the heat of the sensor itself. And dark noise accumulates during long exposures and, and also increases with higher temperatures. To counteract this, many de dedicated astrophotography cameras have a built-in cooling system and dark frame subtraction techniques can also be used to reduce the noise as well. Dark frame subtraction can also help remove fixed pattern noise, which appears in an image as a constant noise pattern, and this is due to defective or dead hot pixels. If we head over to DP Review Studio Shot Comparison page, we can plug in different cameras with different size sensors from the same era to make sure it's fair and see how the noise affects each camera. So we get a fair idea of the difference in noise between each sensor size from that, because they're real world examples. A difference can be seen even when comparing a 17.3 mm by 13 mm micro four third sensor to a 23.6 mm by 15.6 mm the tongue twister, APS-C size sensor. Here I've plugged in a circa 2019 Sony A61 100 camera, the camera I'm using now to record this, and a Lumix G95 Micro Four Thirds camera because it was made in the same year but has a slightly smaller sensor, so we could compare. We can see that the smaller sensor from the Lumix G95 becomes more noisy as we increase the ISO compared to the, the Sony. So what is going on here? Why are the larger sensors cleaner? And the answer lies in the signal to noise ratio which is influenced by the total number of photons collected. Larger sensors capture more light, resulting in a higher signal-to-noise ratio and a clearer image. The formula for signal-to-noise is basically quite simple. It's the total number of photons over the square root of the total number of photons. So in other words, we can just take the square root of the total number of photons and we get our uh, signal-to-noise ratio from that. Okay, I may have oversimplified the numbers here just to make it easy, but if we take a sensor with just one single pixel and it collects nine photons per second, excuse me, its signal to noise ratio is calculated as nine divided by the square root of nine, which is three. So nine over three gives a three to one um, signal to noise ratio, which is quite high third of its noise. Now if we upgrade to a 3 by 3 pixel sensor under the same conditions, it will collect 81 photons per second over that 3 by 3 array, and the signal to noise ratio is 81 divided by the square root of 81, which is 9. 81 over 9 gives a, a signal to noise ratio of 9 to 1, which gives you much more signal per noise nine part signal to one part noise. So in summary, the three by three pixel sensor achieves a signal to noise ratio three times higher than the single pixel sensor that we've imagined. And, and uh, with regards to the optics, we're assuming both sensors are using an imaginary 200 millimeter f4 lens for this example, just because people are gonna ask about the optics. And this is the thing, a large sensor needs a large image circle to cover it properly and a small, lens, a small sensor lens is designed to cover the small sensor, but it won't cover the larger sensor. 
So the optics are really important, but the main thing to consider is that a lens for a micro four thirds camera will be on average smaller than the same type of lens for an APS-C or full frame camera. So we've basically covered the various types of noise in this video so far and shown that all else being equal, larger sensors exhibit less noise, which is a big benefit. But are there any reasons for choosing a smaller sensor camera, even though larger sensors are cleaner? Well, a lot of the time, the optics designed to cover the image circle of small sensor cameras are not only smaller, but they're more affordable as well. And they're also less prone to vignetting, which is darkening towards the edge of the frame. And to remove vignetting, we need to take flat frames and they can be a little bit tricky compared to other types of calibration frames. Smaller sensor cameras show less tilt also and also less optical aberrations, wonky stars towards the edge of the frame. So there is less tuning of the back spacing and, and that makes for an easier setup when you're setting up your imaging train. Small sensor Small sensor cameras also better frame small objects like the planets and this is for a given focal length because the focal length and the size of the, uh, the sensor actually dictate how an object is framed. And small sensors are also capable of faster frame rates as well because they take less time to read out the signal. And there's also a huge work around the small sensors as well in that the, the sensor noise can be mitigated by taking dark frames. And these are simple to capture because they're basically just like the light frames you've taken throughout the night, only you've covered the front of your optics so it doesn't let any photons in. So the image is dark but over the same amount of exposure time and with the same ISO settings and everything. And you can then subtract those dark frames from your light frames in post-processing to remove the noise. So you can get around the noise difference that way basically. So to summarise we've shown that larger sensors clearly produce less noise but they do require a large image circle optics which tends to be more expensive and takes more tuning and care and attention to get right to achieve good results across the frame of your camera and get nice stars across the bigger frame. So there is an argument for keeping to smaller sensor cameras in certain situations. Okay, so that's it for this week's video. I hope it doesn't cause too many arguments in the comment section, but thanks so much to everyone for watching. If you made it this far, well done. And a big thank you as always to my channel members and Patreons. And if anyone wants to see more, they know what to do.